Hey, what it do with the business is. It is another week in the books with the On Deck TV show. I am Spike Lou. Man, holler at your boy Animal Brown, Animal underscore Brown, if you're looking for me on socials. Absolutely, man. And I am Spike Lou on them same social sites. We appreciate you guys being with us. Been busy couple of weeks, A.B. It's still going. Hey, man, listen, we got a whole lineup of shit to talk about. It's really real out here. That's what we're here for. That's what we signed up for, man. We appreciate you guys joining us. What's new to anything new? Before we get into it, or we want to get right into it. No, nah, we got to jump right into it because yeah, it may take some time. Right into this. Yeah, because this is going to be one of those weeks, man. Y'all know what we do, the latest and greatest about hip hop from a Southern perspective. Uh, on this episode, there is a list of TD artists r- floating around, and they somebody ranked them on Twitter, and a couple people had a problem with it. Uh, Gunna will not be asked to take the stand. We want to know what that means. 50 opens a brand new film studio, 21 Savage makes an appearance in Times Top 100. But first, A.B., we can get right to it. People know where we're going to start. Your man's got a lot of complaints about last week and the, the circle jerk session that was you and Maurice on here caping for Drake. I can... Niggas, <laughs> shout out my guy Nick. He said, "Man, I wanted to call in, man. Like I had to balance it out, dude." <laughs> so no, you don't. With great you ain't got performance to. by Mo, with great performance by Mo, man. Drake was not quiet over the weekend. He continued to pile on while we're waiting on the Kendrick response. He dropped a Snoop and Pac AI joint, and I just got a simple question for you, AB. When you heard this, did you like it? Did it land for you? Where you at on the Snoop and Pac AI Drake this? I'm not going to lie, the Taylor May freestyle, when I first saw it, and it was from a reputable source, and it was somebody, Double XL, and one of them tweeted his it page. out. Yeah, it was on all, yeah, I mean, I saw, yeah. that's true. Yeah, it was on his shit, but I saw, when I hopped on Twitter, that's why I saw it first. Okay. But, and it said, Drake featuring AI Tupac and Snoop. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know about that. Like, what? I was like, what is that? So it threw me off a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I was like, that sounds stupid. Yeah. Then I listened to it. Okay. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Never in a million years in the history of rap beef, would I, if you would have asked me, what do I think is about to happen next? What I have said, yo, this is the strategy he need to go with. This was unpredictable. It was entertaining. Even down to the little knockoff Dre beat, all of that was funny to me. I'm not gonna lie. Mm-hmm. Like the 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 Pac, because we know how Kendrick feels about Pac and Snoop. Those are obviously two legends. I, I we know Pac's not right. from the West Coast, but he's looked at as a West Coast legend for his right, time right. at Death Row. We know how much he means to Kendrick and his influence. So to rap from the perspective of him and talk about how disappointed in him he is, that he's now quiet and he had all this energy starting up. Bro, that shit was smart. It was witty. It was creative. I'm not going to sit here and say it's the greatest diss song of all time, but it might be the most unique. I will say that. And so I have to give props. Mm, mm. That I, that was a play I did not see coming. Drake, Drake is playing this very smart and he may have more tricks up his sleeves, which is why he keeps baiting Kendrick. If I were in Kendrick's camp, I would probably take a little bit more time to put whatever we putting together. More out. time. Yes. Just last week you said he on the clock. He is, but they need to, let me say not take more time, but they need to speed up. They need, they need to dedicate more time to what it, what they finna do next because we and me and you talked on this show right here when j cole came out with his song like yo it's gonna be kind of hard to diss kendrick he not really giving you a bunch of material like the nigga got five albums you could argue all of them are classic like it, it's really hard to talk about him the nigga's married he's out the limelight he don't do none of the weird hollywood shit it's really hard to talk about you can get one maybe two short jokes off that's it what do you do this is what you do. There, I, I don't. Uh, niggas hating on it, but they've chose a side. That's fine. Do that, <laughs> bro. <laughs> you can't tell me this isn't entertaining and creative. There's no fucking way you can tell me that. Like, I, I won't believe you if you say it. I'm sorry. And I'm a fan of all parties involved. <laughs> let's be clear. Well, you're more of a Drake fan, so let's be very. Clear. I am, but I'm a fan of all of them, though. I fuck with all of them. Okay. And when you say all of them and it was weird, is it because of the Tupac shit? Is that, but that really what threw you off in the beginning? No, I, just reading 
Drake featuring AI Tupac, yeah, Tupac and Snoop. And I was like, what the Drake fuck does that mean? Drake featuring Pac is crazy. Yeah, I was like, huh? <laughs> but when you listen to it, you get it. Um, I was like, oh shit, that was that was smart. Yeah, man, it's t- it's two ways to look at this, and I've seen both of them. You just mentioned one, and that's the strategic part of it. Yeah, like, I can I can remove the song part of it. It's not a banging song. It's not a scathing diss. It's none of that. But it is. I did find myself. I listened to this probably more than I listened to push ups. Just like process it. Like yeah, just yeah. listening to it. Like, damn, this shit. It crazy. took more than one listen to really, absolutely, to really piece it. I, I, and in doing so, rap as we know it has changed. And Drake is leading the forefront with that. So to address the song part of it first, I agree with you, clever, very clever. Yeah. Like this is new age warfare. This is like going from the revolutionary, we fighting on the front lines and now we're using drones now. Fact. Get used to it, nigga. We're not down on the battlefield no more, nigga. We're using drones and we're doing all sophisticated war shit versus what y'all are used to seeing. And who else to lead the charge in doing that other than Aubrey Graham? Yes, I'm the biggest artist in our genre, in the world that does this. So why wouldn't I use all of these tools that are at my disposal and I got unlimited funds? Yeah. Like it's, it, it's niggas invested in it's It's companies invested in me not failing. So if I need, Oh, throw me 5 million for this Kendrick beef. And that's really a low number. So I can get this AI right. And I get the bots trolling him and get him like ravel razzle. Then absolutely, man, it's a good strategy. We talk about strategy and business and stuff on here all the time. And even in rap beef, it comes into play and it does put the clock, like the, the clock is yeah. speeding up now for Kendrick. Now, like you said, you, you had until a certain time, but now niggas is fucking around with legacies and niggas is doing all kind of weird shit. You don't know what's coming next. You as just a true MC that got bars for a nigga, and that's what you're going to respond with. You ain't going to do the AI shit. You're right. not going to go play the bot game and do any of the stuff online. You're just trying to rap and go back in your cubbyhole, which is fine, or it was fine, before Drake upped the level. So I agree with you, man. Like, this is this is different. It's unique. It's funny. I'm more of a Kendrick fan than I am a Drake fan, but I do appreciate all parties involved, as you said, but I do if I'm speaking objectively. I'd be worried. I texted, like, of course, just gassing it. Like, this, this might be over. Like, yeah, this yeah. might be game, set, match. That's being very hyperbolic about it. However, it is time to start worrying over, like, niggas can, I've seen the rap niggas say, oh, this is corny. I wouldn't do, like, yeah, nigga, you wouldn't do that because you're not Drake. Right. So let's get all of that off the table right now. You can't do that. You wouldn't even thought to do this, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> so to even the, to have the thought to do it, like these other rappers that I've seen and these older school people, like, oh, this is whack. It's not whack. This is right on time. This is the part for the course of where we are now in hip hop. And you know how they tried to float out that AI rapper last year, right? Yeah, I remember that. Or whenever we talked about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About rapper. a year or two ago. Yeah. They probably finna start revisiting some of that shit, man. If we getting the biggest rap or artist, one of the biggest artists in the world to start signing off on this AI shit, then who knows who's gonna start accepting it next? Well, like when you start uh, telling that, someone who nah, I'm telling you, bro, strange. when you start telling somebody, because look, I'm gonna tell you why. Here's my theory behind it. We've always talked about how little passion that we see from new artists nowadays, how it almost seemed like, oh, I'm just doing this rap shit as a job. If a label approaches them and be like, give us a license to use your voice, we won't tell nobody, but it'll be in a contract and we're just going to do AI songs. We're just going to use your voice. We're going to let the you, AI you write the four it. Bats, we're going to pay you that right now. Possibly. Yeah. But I, I'm not sure. And this is no knock. I'm just going to use a name here. I'm not sure if a label approaches little baby and they be like, man, you know what, bro? You don't even got to rap no more. Just let us do the AI shit on your voice, bro. We're going to do the whole next. Act. Like did a Travis Scott album. Not too long ago, yeah, there was yeah, on DSPs, right. there was a full AI album. Yeah, for so sure. So if you're telling niggas that, okay, and I get to sign off and see if it's banging or not, and I ain't never got a rap again, you just selling my image, I'll sign some niggas up. Like, because some niggas don't love this shit enough not to do that. No, so, I, I understand that. I just, I I don't yeah. think it's the beginning of the end, and I, I I want people to come down off the ledge. You are not Will Smith, you, and man. we are what not living in our robot. Me, different shit happens. <laughs> niggas is not Will Smith and we not living in iRobot dude they are not finna take over the fucking world because Drake had a, a a verse or two the Snoop verse sounded like Snoop though. I ain't gonna lie the Pac verse was clear AI 
if it wasn't for yeah, the flow, yeah, I, didn't, I couldn't even tell that was Pac at first. Yeah, at I, first, I was like, oh, that's supposed to be Pac. Facts. It wasn't that like, one, oh, nigga, that's Pac. It was like, oh, that's supposed to be Pac. Yeah, the Snoop verse sounded like he recorded it. I ain't, oh, it just facts. the flow was clearly Drake, but yeah, I, I, I think was, that's what made it kind of dope though. Like the I, whole flow, you could tell that's Drake shit. It that's what make it like funny. Yeah, that's that, what made it. Yeah, fact. But dude, we're talking about a, a artist who makes fun of himself. He did the fucking skit with Chris Brown after they had got into it in the club. And nigga did the skit on the ESPYs with him, dude. Like a year or two later, like this nigga is cool with yeah. making fun of himself. Have you watched his music videos? Like, dude, he there, you can't. It's hard to poke or attack someone who pokes fun at themselves. He even did it in this song. Hey man, mention something about the, the girls like Joe Budden and them talk about. Like he done eight mile himself, dude. You, now Kendrick can't even use yeah. that if he had that's that in the, the talk. Yeah, bro. That's the that's the that's dangerous smart, part. Of what bro. Of, that's what sparked me to saying that this is over because I'm taking all the chips off the table. Like I even heard one of the disses, and not even this. I think the nigga behind the Kendrick disses as well, because here's where it goes. Not only when Kendrick comes out, will you wonder, is that AI? Like he's already like jaded there, and they like it could be a legit Kendrick song. You still gonna wonder is it AI just because Drake did it? So yep. it's that side doing it. And also too, if I'm Drake, the next songs is dropping is the fake Drake. This is like you said, doing the rabbit from Eight Mile. I've yep. already heard the Kendrick diss where they talk about him getting peed on by Ti Homeboy. So that's yep. off the table now. Yep. The young girl shit is off the table, like you said. Like all of these things are off the table, and it's gonna take away that wow factor when Kendrick finally decides to rap about it. And especially if they saying it like they've been saying it. Oh, it's hey, nigga been having this done for years. Like, yeah, like you might have to throw that one away, fly. bro. Yeah, no. Nah. You got to throw that old one away. Like you, you need to be in the studio right now. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, it's scary. I was no pun intended for Kendrick out here, man. And that's my man's. Listen, that I, is my I, man's. I, there's no way. Now you can call you. You can say, man, the use of AI, and I and I likened it to another use of AI. Y'all was hating in the chat, bro. It's, listen, yeah, that was it's a the, wild example. That was that was the, insane, bro. It's the evolution. That was insane. It's the evolution of no one said anything. When Kendrick was mighty morphing into fucking Nipsey Hussle and OJ Simpson, dude, all that shit was groundbreaking. It was legendary. It was a, a video of the year. Nobody mm -hmm. said, hey, man, this is a slippery slope. It, how do we know he's going to be the person in his videos? What if he no longer does his videos? It's just AI of him. Nobody, Nobody said fucking that, said that, 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 dude. Heard that, though, bro. You know that's different, though. No, but of course it. it's you always different. Say that. And we it's, always talk about it because you have the visual there. You can see it. It's like we talked about with the Ray Rice. It's different when you got video. And in this sense with music and you don't have video and you're only hearing this, you're wondering if your mind playing tricks on you. Bro, he looks so just the like difference. them niggas, bro. He could have done the whole video like Nipsey, you bro. You wouldn't have known that wasn't him. <laughs> he could have done the whole video that yeah, way. Yeah, you would have because you, you, you know what? Nipsey's dead. So you would have known that. He picked you would have known else, that dude. it wasn't him. It would have been. We knew this wasn't Pac, dude. Oh, no. <laughs> you, you said it yourself. It didn't really, it, it sounded like an AI Pac, bro. But like, yeah, fam, the, like, niggas are taking that shit way too seriously. You knew seriously. it wasn't Pac, but you knew it wasn't Pac, but what was clever about it, as we both admitted, is you could tell what Drake was doing. Right. But the motherfuckers is paying attention to the game. They could tell what Drake was doing. That's a that was a chess. So move, the bro. way that is, absolutely. So that's how I feel like it's different. Kendrick was just, this is what's like having fun. You can see it. You see me morphing into him. I have a slick message tied to it or whatever the heart message was. Uh, but I heard a, a cool theory. Speaking of that video, I got to give my guy Dan credit for this. Um, he was like, first of all, there's rumored that Kendrick's album is coming out in May. Yeah. That's for him. So he may save the disc for that. Two, the next heart is the heart part six. What if that heart part six goes to the sixth God? I ain't even got to put it on my album or nothing. Y'all used to these. Here go this whole heart part six with me tearing. Like, that. I think that would be the move. That's why I put it there. That's about, how bro. I do it, especially. Oh, I don't know. That's that's yeah. what he get paid the big bucks for. That's true. I'm the marketing man. I can give him the idea, but you got to go still do the rap. But that heart part six, that would be fire. And making yep. it like the sixth God shit and just tearing his ass up. Or if he skipped Pause, it into but... a seven. What if he skips six? I don't 1. know. Point seven. Hmm. Like I mean, you I know mean, what I'm saying? Something, something got to happen though. It got to be. Something got to happen. Like it, I see, it, it, here's I the see problem. a lot of the niggas from the West Coast chirping. Go ahead. If, if we can predict it, then that's not the move. Like that's how I'm looking mm. at it now, bro. <laughs> if, if me mm. and you can call it right here, then that you shouldn't do that. 
I remember watching Snowfall. Oh, I don't know. Nobody, nobody, nobody said, hey, I, you know how I think this is going to end? I think he's going to end up not dead or in jail, but actually a bum is strung out. Nobody guessed that. We all were thinking mm -hmm. he was going to be dead or in jail. And if they would have played that, maybe it would have worked. Maybe it wouldn't, but it would have been predictable. What they went with, whether you liked it or not, was unpredictable. So if we sit here and, and can call out the shot that Kendrick about to do, it ain't good enough. Same thing with Drake. If I can call out what Drake finna do, it's not good enough, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. That is a very, very <laughs> fair point. Because I just, I don't, I don't see, again, I'm not Kendrick Lamar. I just don't see the move. I don't see the unpredictable move. Like, other than... Like, like what we do know is he's going to have a song or what we think. We don't he even know to. this. He got to. But yeah, it's either going to be on an album. It ain't going to be just no, I don't know. So yeah, you're so. right. That's a good point. <laughs> I don't, the nigga back against the wall. This, this will, I would argue this is probably one of the most important verses, songs of his career. Even with a, such a stellar career that he has, even with we know that it's, this is not going to wipe him off the map. Of course Nas not. was still Nas after Blueprint 2. Jay was still Jay after Ether. So it's not going to have that type of effect. But just the overall sentiment of you're the boogeyman. You yeah. did control. You turned like that into this. Like if, if this is the most important verse to keeping that reputation alive. It, it got to be That's tough, what he bro. Cares and, I, and, I, and listen, I don't know when the last time y'all listened to some Kendrick Lamar. The nigga's amazing. Let's be very clear about that. Like, mm -hmm. dude is in the t big three for a reason. He's really in the big two for a reason. Like, the nigga's stupid nice. So it's right. not as if he doesn't have it in him. I'm just trying to think of the angle that will work in the context of everything that's happened up until this point. Because I don't know the angle. Question before we move on. I've seen this out here. I want to know what you think. They can get on Dex's opinion from it. Do you shoot Cole any more bail now that you've seen where this has went? See, I asked and that he, last week. Remember, I asked that last week. I said, even now, you can double down. Yeah, even now, more so. Because yeah, now, I, like, I, it wasn't a big deal to me to begin with. I said nobody was going to care. Man, full of shit. I said that's, no that's, one would care if the next project baby. is a, if the fall off is a classic, no one will care, bro. I promise no, people you. People going to be talking about this forever, bro. No. This is unprecedented. This is that, uh -huh. yeah. They, even, even you, if you don't care, there's going to be niggas that do care. And when that fall off come out, they're going to say, yeah, but you remember your apologize. Yeah, there'll be some. There, there, there will be mm -hmm. some. But just like with anybody else, we're going to talk about Gunner in a little bit. Bro, when that Gunner album came out, niggas was online talking about he 15 for 15. They didn't give a shit about it. The talk leading up to that was all him in court, YSL. Uh, that was the talk. That was all mm -hmm. it was. He came out with the mm -hmm. music and... Hey man, turn that fuck you mean up, dude. Like niggas didn't care about that shit no more. Niggas wasn't saying that, bro. They just yeah. the music trumps everything, dude. That deep in the rap just turned like 10, 15 years old the other day. When he when that Valley of Death came on, nobody cared about the sea ocean no more. It was mm. old with. It was dead. Mm. Dead. He killed that in one song. AB's bail bondsman opening <laughs> near you for gunner. We shoot gunner all the bail in the world, but we'll get that later. What we got next? <laughs> Next up, man, listen, the 20 V1 continues. Kanye <laughs> disses Drake and J. Cole <laughs> on the uh, Like That remix. Well, the unofficial Like That remix he jumped on. Uh, him and Ty Dolla Sign jumped on it. Ty Dolla Sign just did his thing. He wasn't really <laughs> getting involved in all the extra shit. Um, they are prepping Vultures 2, which comes out May 3rd. Um, so do you look at this as a viable disresponse from Kanye or is he just seizing the opportunity to get back in the news what kind of slave contract is Ty Dolla Sign under where he got to do everything he ain't <laughs> like how I mean, they promoting the project shit? so you gonna hop on a diss song with a nigga yeah it's, Ty Dolla Sign is crazy but <laughs> I get it it's Kanye West um you know what and I said this after we watched and talked about the documentary it's Kanye like I can't I can't hate it because he's not acting like this is what he would do anyway. Like, this is like, he's been this way since we've seen this nigga on the documentary and his mom was talking about him. Like we've seen, this is what he does. This is not a surprise. So, I mean, is it cloud chasey? Yes. <laughs> the funny thing to me is how excited this nigga is that he thinks Drake finna go to, it, this nigga hates Drake. Clearly. Like this nigga hate, he ain't Drake more than Pusha T hate Drake. Like this and nigga hates, and all them niggas. like yeah, he got the most hate for Drake as any nigga on the planet, and Drake is the most hated on nigga. But Kanye, like nobody hate for Drake is up there with Kanye's, and you could hear it in this nigga verse. 
uh i again i'm not mad at this i i I, i'm happy that he's participating and that everybody is seems to be paying attention to what's going on in hip-hop right now so i do appreciate that aspect of it the the verse overall for me maybe it was a six he really didn't do his thing on that of me it was some funny kanye lines as you get now but this is where he at now he ain't i don't think he necessarily gonna rip it on the west side high is like he needs like i don't know what the, the the relationship status is with them two but you can clearly tell he's not writing anything for kanye west anymore right. it doesn't seem like uh so yeah this is an average verse and what i expect from kanye especially if niggas is teaming up on drake like i know I, no one called him he called niggas are y'all beating up drake oh man where y'all at man i'm gonna come through i'm gonna come through bro yeah, so, yeah this, this is expected and and for that I, it, it's lame and i'm hot Ooh, i'm hot in my man, boy. that's your man well you like drake more than you like kanye that's it's just it's official now, it's official sure now. you just made it true you just made it true man this was an opportunist play and kanye is supposed to be bigger than that so it's disappointing. He? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He he had a number one this year, man. It's it's, it's bigger than that. He's he's supposed to be a bigger entity than that. And he he that it's it's lame that he's stooping to that level. Because again, I and I said this before and I asked this last week or one or maybe the week before, is it lame that so many people are jumping on one person? Most oh. sane people would be like, Yeah, that's kind of eh. even in real life, <laughs> if you feel if you watch six niggas jumping on, you'd be like, ah, okay, like y'all, y'all overdoing. I mean, listen, nigga, like was completely out of bounds. But if it's I'm like, missed. like, bro, let niggas shoot the fade, bro. Like, let Kendrick and, and Drake just do this one on one, and we don't need. I don't need Ross. I rock fuck with Rose. I don't need Ross. Uh, Kanye's obviously my guy. I do not need him jumping on the unauthorized remix, getting that shit taken down two hours later. Like, bro, you did you did all that for nothing. And yes, we know. Now we know that the new shit come out next week. That's all you really wanted to get out there. That's perfectly fine. You didn't need this. Put another twenty dollar hoodie up on your website and let people know the album's coming. That's all you had to do. You'd have been good. We don't need it. The, the verse was mid, dude. The verse That's was super, super mid. mid. There's one or two Kanye isms in it that was kind of funny, and that was it. Again, if Even it wasn't the beat Drake, was hard though. Be, the beat was they did the, the, the way was they hard. flipped that. That was that was hard. hard. Yeah, that was all. And I randomly came across that sample today. I, I, the, the the original, that even everlasting bass sample for him. I, I knew that I knew it. Yeah. And I didn't want to look it up until I just could figure it out for myself and I found it. It said Barry White, that do 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 do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. I did not. I was humming it like, damn, I know that song from somewhere. Yo. So I was very proud Beat of myself. I, I looked it up. I will that say flip that. was fire. Yeah, that beat was hard. Uh, but yeah, man, this is what he do. Like, I, I, I don't expect anything different from Kanye West um, and that's that on that but next I, what I did not expect AB yeah. as I was listening to the, the Drake and Tupac and just paying attention to everything that was going on I did see the post in a couple of my group chats oh man Chris Brown dissed Quavo I'm like, again I'm not again again yeah. and I, the, my, the first thought in my head was bro I'm not listening to that man I don't care about Chris Brown and Quavo but for some reason later on in the day I did finally get to it and I was shocked <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you I want to know is this the hardest this record of 2024 it might be the most scathing because we know there's real we know what the tie is of course it's over a gal it always it usually always is so there's Sounds real like, like history man. so the accusations that he was making in there, they did kind of sting a little bit, like, ugh, like, damn. And then plus, mm-hmm. I, and I'm a I'm a huge proponent of Chris Brown never rapping, ever. I, re- I wish he would have never Rip started. I up. think he's that talented with everything else that he didn't need to rap and game bang. And I, I, all that shit is completely out of my, over my head. However, he was ripping that, though. Like, he was in his bag on that, dog. Like, I ain't going to he was really that. Only, like, lie. that was the only diss song you did the scrunch face with. When you was like, oh shit. Yeah, he, yeah, that was he took some shots on there, and especially the day we wish it would have been you instead of take, take oh, off. Like, oh shit. Crazy. <laughs> there was some fighting words in there. So yeah, yeah. It was scathing. It for sure. It, it was salacious. It had the it had all of the tea and all that shit in there. So I get why people Felt the way they did about it. I listened to it once though. I ain't gonna it's not that I'm gonna repeat again, nah, but I listened to that more than once. No, nah, I didn't. I you ain't gonna lie to you. Back. I was, nah, I was a one and done. I was a one and nah, done. stop that, man. You know done. what the test is. I was I was in a barbershop. And mm-hmm. I cut it off. There's this female barber in there. And I was 
asking her had she heard about it. She's like, no, nah, I ain't here. <laughs> so you had and a I female barber using super cuts, wouldn't you? No, there was a female barber in there. I didn't say that I had a female barber. It, 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 nothing wrong with it, though. She cold, though. No, I believe ice it. Cold. Yeah, she ice cold. But she was like, no, I didn't hear it. And uh, so I played the uh, I played that one for her. And you can always gauge by how the chicks respond to it. Like, by the end of the Chris Brown joint, she was, like, editing, like, doing almost, you know, damn near dancing to it. Yeah. And then I played the Drake and the Tupac, and she, she was like, "Nah, cut this off." Yeah, I that, them two completely different. Wasn't two completely man. different yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. But I do say that to say, Chris Brown know how to make songs, man. And I didn't realize that him and Quavo hated each other this way. But I just haven't been paying attention. They showed the clips of the basketball shit. Yeah. It was like, "Bring your bitch ass out here!" Like, yeah, yeah. Them niggas ain't liked each other for a while, and yeah. this might get ugly, bro. Uh, did he, Chris Brown, drop the the hardest diss record of twenty twenty four? Yes. This My was hell. bang. <laughs> like this was hard. It was. I couldn't deny this, bro. Like I and I, I, I'm not a Chris Brown fan. I don't listen to his music really. I ain't in that R and B bag, so I didn't even really know the nigga rapped like that. I didn't. I wasn't even to a place where you was where you were saying, "Well, I wish he didn't rap at all." This was new to me that he was rapping. So I'm like, "Damn, Chris Brown slick got a little flow and everything." But yeah, this was very scathing. I know that Quavo was hot about this, and since this has dropped, a B, I don't know if you got to listen. Quavo has responded. Did you get to yeah. listen to the response? And what do you think? I did. I listened to the response and it featured it featured takeoff on there. Yep. I, I wasn't mad at it. I kind of I, I like that too. I'm gonna be honest. Chris Brown has dropped two songs. Quavo has dropped two songs. They've been <laughs> solid songs. I like the time, Quavo man. one. The, the uh the other one. The other one. That's I kind of like that one. Like to me, they've been straight. I'm not gonna lie. That, hey, Chris, <laughs> Chris Brown got the best one, but I kind of and it's been happening. This is all has happened in like a week and a half, max. This shit on fire. Hey, so it's, it's, that Chris Brown cover art is crazy. Man, that's so funny. Because you remember we talked about that. Yeah, he had the gold flakes about him, on, the, yeah. on the hot dog. <laughs> and we said it then. We said that then. Like, bro, that's a crazy picture, nigga. Gold flakes or not. We said that on, on deck. You heard that first. And Chris Brown must have listened because he damn so. Yeah, that that would have been the picture that I used. Hey, listen. Bro, you out here eating hot dogs in public, bro? The, the, the cover art. It looks funny. Claudia has eyes closed in there. It was savoring the hot dog. You can't savor the glizzy in public, bro. That's a quick little bite, nigga. You can't just go this nigga. He had a little stance and everything, bro. He was staring into the glizzy and everything, dog. Nigga double palm in the glizzy and shit. Like, bro, what are you doing? No a nigga gonna use this on you, bro. Hey. But, I ain't gonna lie. That's the 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 funniest parts of That's all this shit. That you got this. If you got listen, if you got beef with a nigga, you gotta have a whole rollout together. You gotta have yeah. the artwork gotta be funny. The, the song gotta be fun. Like you gotta have. It's a total package, dude. Facts. All this gotta be funny. It's been that way for a while. If you go back and look at G Unit, oh G Unit, hey, look at Elephant in the Sand. Go Google that. Go look, at, look at the yeah. cover of that shit. It's a, you know what I'm saying. You gotta. It's all part of the whole shit, and they're succeeding with that because that shit was funny. Super funny, but yeah, that Quavo this in response was hard too with takeoff. Yeah, I wasn't I, mad at I, that. I appreciated it. Yeah, like and, it's over though. It's over now though. This, this is over. Yeah, because Chris, Chris, even Brown Chris Brown said, Brown said, said man, that wasn't even Warner good enough to respond to. So somebody gonna get their ass kicked. I'll tell you that. I don't know who, with, and I ain't really promoting it, but somebody gonna get their ass kicked, bro. Them niggas was this just next far. to each other at a fashion show. What? How long ago was it? That was a couple months ago, and them niggas was not fucking. With, you could, they they were seated next to each other, and that shit was hella awkward. You could cut the tension. Somebody, but if I'm quick, well, somebody got to get fired. Or yeah, well, yeah. I don't even. Who who says I'm not sitting right? Both of them trying to be macho and be like, you not like me ain't moving, I ain't moving. What would you have been like if if you was in that situation? Would you be like, man, I'm not sitting next to that nigga? I mean, but if 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 they like nigga, that's the only place to sit. Then what? You finna leave? I'm Quavo. Y'all can't find him another seat. Well, I'm, or is, or is Quavo bigger than Chris Brown? I'm Chris fucking Brown. That's yeah, I, nigga, I ain't sitting next to this bum ass nigga. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. That so, shit yeah, look that, awkward, that. bro. Like, pull up the clip. Oh. You'll see it. I see a, a still photo. I ain't see the clip. Okay. So then he been knowing that he wanted like that's yeah. So yeah, nothing probably gonna happen then if they was that close. But it's been entertaining, man. I didn't see that one coming, and it's actually been pretty entertaining. So salute to them. Mm. Uh, next up, man, Time Magazine's their annual top 100 most influential people's list came out. Uh, you already buried the lead and told the world who was on it, so we might as well. The one and only hip hop artist to make the list 
was 21 Savage, man. Uh, fresh off a of number one album, American Dream, this year. And a pretty big year with the tour, um, with Drake's tour last year. And then, of course, her loss the year before. Um, mm. Is this fair that 21 Savage is the only rapper on the top 100 most influential people in 2024? And did he, does he deserve to be on it? That Drake stimulus is still going crazy, I see. And shout out to Rock Nation <laughs> for this happening. 21 Savage is not the first rapper that I would have thought of if you asked me influence. It's just not mm. it's just not hating on him. It's not saying that he don't deserve it. But if you ask me, someone who we come in here and we cover this on a weekly basis, and you say who, who who's one of the most influential rappers, of course there is the low-hanging fruit. There's Drake. There's, there's the big yeah. three. There's J. Cole. The big three, yeah. Yeah, that's all of those guys when you're talking about influence and even more so than those three future put on his album like nigga i'm one of the most influential artists of the last decade 21 savage is inspired or influenced by future so it's fine that 21 savage is on there because i do get his relevance over the last year or two years or whatever they're basing it off of but however if you are going to put rappers on there and they're are 100 slots if i had to put someone else on that it would be future it would be yeah future if i'm not just beating a dead horse and like you're not giving michael jordan the mvp every year you right. can't put drake on there every year so i wouldn't do that just to make it still more like people want to know what it is but future would be the other person that i put on there. i think Who future's future's time is he's a it was a little bit too close to this deadline right here this just came out mm, mm. um i think Cause last year was slow in hip hop, relatively speaking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a slow year. They didn't have a number one until halfway through the year, and it was Lil Uzi Vert. And if you probably asked a hundred people, ninety nine of them wouldn't even know that. So, I, I can see it since it was a slow year. Twenty One Savage had the first number one in hip hop this year, early in January. He had a nice rollout with the trailer, with the fake movie with Childish Gambino in it, and all blah blah blah. He had a big year on it. it was all a blur tour with Drake. He's coming off another project with him that had plenty of bangers on it. 21, why not you do something for me? So his his impact or his his star power has grown in the last year and a half for sure. Um, so I'll, I'll give him that simply because I can't think of other the only other person I could really think of is maybe Killer Mike because he had album of the year last year in the culture and in the Grammys. And he swept the Grammys in terms of his categories that he was in. Hey, he walked away with three of them. You could argue with that body of work that he was talking about and how it impacted the culture and how it even permeated through to the, the recording uh, in, uh, academy at the Grammys that I could argue he could be on there. But other than that, though, I'm not mad at the 21 selection, though, man, just because it was a down year last year. But when I think influence, I think that you're setting trends and other people want to be like you. I don't look at the landscape of hip hop and say he's clearly a 21 Savage clone or he's clearly off that tree of 21 Savage. And maybe it is for some younger artists like Nudie or people that I'm not familiar with and don't listen to. But even with Killer Mike, to your example, I get what you're saying. His presence was felt over the last year, but I don't see many Killer, killer Mikes out there either. Like That's he's, true. Probably, he's really one of a kind. And the reason that I say future, I see that influence. I see the people but you can say that every trying year, to though. be like Pleto. He didn't drop last year, mean? though. That's what I'm saying. Even, like, more, what you... even more impactful. He ain't do this. The, the one with the, the shit on, we had the, the visor on in the back of the car. That one last year? I thought that was year Wait before last. The... Yeah, that was year could've, before could've, last. Could've... That's the thing. Too. So it's, it's the top 100 influential people of 2024. Yeah. I'm trying to see what the, right the criteria right. was. Uh, and this thing wouldn't put one of the ass. female rappers on there. No, nah. over the People last year, red? six. Yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe most interesting or most, I don't know, but influential. Yeah. I mean, I get it. I get it. Let me see. It I says. Get it he it says, uh, the people on this list, each in their own way, have lessons to teach. We can debate those lessons. We don't have to endorse them or agree with them. Uh, but the influence of this year's Time 100 to mine is that down to the last person, they have the power to make us think, and they are using it. Yeah, see, I don't get that from I that Now that they you say that, I would say Killer Mike. Killer Mike, for sure. Yeah, that, would, that would definitely be the one, especially when the rap album of the year. If you're going to put one rapper on there, he should have been it. 
I definitely, okay, now, now, now you're killing my father, it makes a lot more sense with that description. Question before we move on to that, y'all say that the, speaking of sexy red, do you think a a man or a dude or a, a hot popular rapper could hop on, like, get it sexy, a ski, and do a remix? No. Can't no dude hop on, get it sexy. It wouldn't make no sense. Are they going to do the dance? Soldier Boy. <laughs> they going to do the dance? <laughs> I don't know if they'll do the dance, but I, the beat banging, the hook banging. So be hard as hell. You would figure somebody could get on there and do the remix. Uh, that'd be a stretch. On, the I, only I one, know. like dead ass, it would be some Soldier Boy. Because it reminds you, it take you back to that era a little bit. Oversized yeah. clothes type shit. And he's in the video, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he is. He so it kind of it kind of fits that, but a verse. But I don't want to hear that, though. <laughs> I don't, let's be clear. I don't want to hear the you Soldier Boy. You can see like Fab popping on there. So. Oh, no. <laughs> He can jack the beat. <laughs> he can jack the beat I'm for about sure. The official remix. Yeah, he definitely can jack the beat, though. All right, man. Next AB, Adam22 from No Jumper Podcast shares a DM. It's from Drake. And it's speaking on the hip hop media victory. Uh Drake says it's A, it's J B P Act and No Jumper. Is this an actor or this or not? So this is tough when you say hip hop media because in my opinion, it's three podcasts. If we're going to go big three with hip hop media, the big three podcasts are Drink Champs, Joe Budden Podcast, and Million Dollars Worth of Game. But those all three have rappers in them. So I'm for the sake of argument and to diversify it, I'll keep one rapper led podcast and I would keep Joe Budden. And then the other two slots, I would say. Act, nah, I, I wouldn't put no jumper in there. Let me be clear. I wouldn't put no jumper. Yeah. And the, and originally it was Vlad. The, the argument was Act, was Vlad. Joe Budden, and Vlad. And then Drake said, take Vlad out and put no jumper in. In the in the DM, allegedly. I don't know if this is an AI DM or, or a real DM, but, but let Adam yeah. say it was a real DM. So if I had to go, I, I would say Joe Budden. I kind of want to say Breakfast Club. And then maybe Vlad, I don't, oh, and I'm not, I'm not necessarily say saying it because I don't even listen to Joe, but I don't think I've ever listened to a full Joe Button episode, but I, I recognize his place and the moments that he's had in the culture. That's hating too, by the way. Yeah, and I'm good. But I, I, so I would say those three, if I had to give a big three outside of rapper led podcast, which is kind of a cheat code in my opinion, because they get anybody it's, and everybody not, on their who rapper led podcast? Yeah, they didn't get anybody, bro. Nor can literally call anybody outside of, no, I don't know, Drake. Jay maybe ain't been on there. Who? Like Nori? Nori can't get anybody that everybody else don't get. That's what I'm like. Like you ain't seen Nori make the Jay Z play. Oh well, yeah, no, like, the, 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 the Jay Z, the, the Cardi B's, the the Drakes. That's gonna be tough. Yeah, like Nori still can't get them. No. Yeah, but nobody. Um, they're, they're not doing anybody's shit, really. So I don't know. I like Angie Martinez has a podcast i think that if, if she wanted a, a, a favor from jay he'd do it and he did rap May radar too didn't he is rap radar still around it is rap radar he did, still he did being it when made. they were on title but but that's still being made today yeah but you you have the reason you have to yeah. if you have to ask that then it's not on the big three then. well no i'm 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 hating one i'm gonna be very Fair clear enough. i'm hating i don't listen to them that uh but i do fuck with uh elliot <sighs> I wouldn't. I, I agree with you on the no jumper stance, just because I feel like that that's that's like the uh, National Enquirer. Like you see it, mm -hmm. you see it right there when you check it I out. I agree. For, for those that don't know what that is, is from a different generation. It was the magazine in the grocery store was like aliens have landed. The tabloids. In Florida. Yeah, like that, that's what no jumper is to me. I don't really hold that in a respect. I agree, place. but they were popular though. No, they, they were, were doing numbers. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. People would still pay attention. And they even broke stories sometimes. Like For it sure. was every now and then would be some real shit that was on there that they broke. But I look at No Jumper like that, so I wouldn't put them in the big three. I'm more of a JBP fan than you are. I do listen to it on a frequent basis, so I definitely will put Joe in there. Yeah. And I will put Ack in there just from his recent surge. Like, if niggas is coming to you for the diss tapes and niggas is coming to you to break shit, then, you, yeah, you broke you. Like, regardless if I like him or if other niggas like him or not, right? It, it, the impact is there. Like, There's a generation that is listening to him that he's Absolutely. got a chokehold on. That he got a chokehold on it. They ain't not going to Joe Budden. They not going to the radio or none no, of that no. shit. Um, I think the Breakfast Club has fallen a little 
and I wouldn't put million dollars game, million dollar worth of game in that because they they interviews are just bad. Like mm-hmm. I like Wallow and Gilly Energy. I fuck with both of them as people, but the interviews are just not good. They do too much joking and playing it back and forth. I could never really get into it. I would still put Sway right there, bro. Like what the last still Sway, Sway moment though, bro. I and I fucks with. Let me be very clear. Sway is a legend. I fucks with him heavy, but he ain't got no moments like that right now. Ain't none bro. of them freestyles that we like that you post in, in December shit. Like some of them be on Sway, though. right? But that ain't Sway. Uh, you see what I was, I'm saying? I would still say it's Sway because if you, if you went, okay, let's say you didn't fuck with Joe. Okay. And let's I don't. say you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and let's say you felt like you was too old to go on act shit. Okay. If I wanted to break some news, I'm not. I'm definitely not calling Adam. Right. right? Yeah. No. I'm definitely not calling Adam twenty two, and I'm definitely, I'm definitely not calling Vlad. Yeah, he's not. A, he's he's not a breaking news, news platform, though. Right. So, yeah. well, he is kind of though. Nah. Like hood news. Like he bro, he's broken news on there when motherfuckers be like, oh, I didn't know that. Like the whole shit with he had push a T manager on there and. The but that's that's uh, different though. That, that's that's that tell me your news though. But that's telling me your story from A to Z. And if there's news in that timeline, then okay, then he but know there's current news event that news, he's not. It, they, okay, they, they don't fair. come to that for that. So then and that he, X's him out too. That goes to my point. You're right. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. goes to my point. So I don't know how comfortable I feel putting Breakfast Club in there, but and they ain't had a moment in a minute either. It's been but, a while. Their, but their content has been solid. They just had no moments. The way they have had the last moment I would say that they had was when Sexy Red went up there and she wouldn't fuck with. That was yeah, you're right. That was entertaining. She wouldn't fuck with um Jess, Jess Hilarious. Yeah. So yeah, I guess Breakfast Club would have to be number three then. Because like again, I'm looking at it if I had a team, if I'm behind the marketing of a of an artist and I'm like, okay, Joe is out and Ack is out, who would I go to next? It oh, it's Breakfast have Club. To be Breakfast Club. Yeah, it had to be. Yeah, they gotta be. That's true. Syndicated radio show. Yeah, Charlemagne's on there. Like, yeah, that, it, that would be it. So Breakfast Club, I would say, is number three, reluctantly. Even though I ain't watched that shit in a while. But yeah. Have Have you watched Vlad's Boosie tour of his, the houses he building? Absolutely fire. That's Absolutely what, fire. that's what, he he's dabbling into that, which nobody else is doing, that we've named. Nobody. What are you dabbling into? Like, he's doing, like, the estate like, tours. Is more and content, the, stuff like that? Yeah, more like out really? of the studio shit. Who else has he done that with? Uh, he done that with like a a barbecue spot in Cali well, that that's shit, really that shit was popular, and he did that really? with a couple of sports players. So oh, he's done the whole like cribs that. type thing. But the thing with Boosie, the, the the thing that's dope about Boosie's is if y'all don't know, he's building. He bought eighty acres, and so he's building homes, single family homes for his kids on his land. And he did the tour of it, fire. super fire. He did a tour of it last year with Vlad, and then they just redid another one so you can see the progress. And he's breaking it down to why he's doing it and where things are finna be. That, I, nobody's doing that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if, if he doubles down on stuff like that with the right people, with the right message, then that, 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 I, I, that gets him, that moves him up a slot, in my opinion. Maybe. I, I think... He, I, I personally think Vlad too salacious for that. I don't think he's here for that type of content. I think he's here. Man, for he's here for what gets views, content. bro. He's here for what gets views. I'm a, I'm a, I ain't gonna hold you. I don't even know. Yeah, I don't even damn. know if that's true though, because he, I, I feel like if it was something positive that would get views, then he wouldn't do it. But if it was negative shit, to bro, get you're views, not looking at the, these would. videos are getting the boosy ones. Are I'm talking about the boosy house he's stuff. Numbers. Hell yeah, yeah. Levar. He did one with Levar and went crazy toward the house. Levar Ball. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I'd watch. People that. are into yeah. it. They're fucking. Y'all haven't it. seen that boost. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If y'all ain't seen that boost, we'll go check that out. That's fire. He said That's he motivating. A subdivision on this land. Did you see that? What happened? He said he was trying to build a subdivision. He was oh yeah, to build a subdivision. Yeah, on his land, on his bro. land, which is gonna be fire. Yeah, I, I fuck with him, yeah, man. And, and real quick, because I'm not the I'm not a Boosie fan musically, but to do this, it's crazy. Coming home. From tw- in 2014, outside. he said when he came home in 2014, he had no money, zero. So and so we can't think. Oh yeah, Boosie been around. He been here for 20 years. Like this ain't 20 year long money, Boosie. This is 10 year run, Boosie, that he's able to accomplish what he's accomplished. And we can't name a song between the two of us that he's dropped in the last 10 years. 
So to be able to finesse, or not even finesse, but just to hustle his way back to where he at, like there's no way you can't respect that, in my opinion. Facts. When you talk about fan bases, and you like he mentioned this on his last album that I listened to for a review. I don't um, believe you listened to Boosie's last album for a review. Facts. No if, fucking He had a song word. called... <laughs> he had a song called Top Ten or some shit like that, the greatest alive. And he brought up the fact he was like, bro, you gotta think with concentration camp, I was doing work in the nineties. Yeah. And then two thousands when I was really like Boosie. And then 2010 to 2020, like I had the Boosie there, and then 2020 to right now. He was like, bro, I've been popping for four decades down there. He wasn't popping in the nineties though. We nobody knew who he was in concentration people knew camp. Who he was. was. People I, the, niggas, man, people no. Did, bro. If you knew, you knew. If you knew, you did know. Like, That's stop it. Like, it was niggas though. that was listening to Lil Bootsy. Okay, but I've been relevant for four decades. Not popping. I've been popping for two, but I've been relevant for four. Uh, That's okay. how you get I, I'll take that. seven yeah. houses. That's how you get seven houses on 80 acres. That's true. Like, he could, he probably got out for them 10 years. He could still go do, like, chilling circuit tours tomorrow. For sure. And go to places that most niggas wouldn't go to and pick up a thirty, forty thousand dollar $40,000 bag, do that four or five times a week. So, yeah. And, and swag surf on the sideline at the Hawks game. It's embarrassing. <laughs> embarrassing. Did you see he bought his girl a, a Bronco truck and they was going hard at a foot? His daughter? That? Or his Ooh. his like girlfriend or something? His fiance. Yeah, his fiance. Who's he has a fiance? He bought her. Yeah, he's gonna get married. He no one of these way. Instagram chicks. Uh, it's an Instagram that's chick. That I, I don't know where else anybody would know her from. <laughs> she may she may have something else going on. I don't know, but she was doing a video and talking about how uh, people were going, trying to joke because he bought her a a Bronco truck. What's wrong? Like a new like joint or like the, like the OJ shit? Yeah, he had a new Bronco. No, no, no. <laughs> so he bought the OJ shit? Mind your, fiance, the, mind your fiance, the OJ Bronco is crazy. But no, the new joint. Because that's what she said she liked, though. And she was like, you know, people were saying you should have got the G-Rag and you should have got the ah, okay. voice or whatever. It might be. And she was like, man. That's the I'm internet, like, though. That's what man. I wanted. Yeah, yeah, that's stupid. I just I ain't mad at that. Yeah. Hey, my gal just cooled the Bronco. I respect that. And I'm gonna have two Birkins in that moment. Run too. it. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I ain't even tripping. Exactly. I ain't tripping. Now you ain't gotta worry about the Birkin bag. Exactly. 100 percent That's a good point. <laughs> what we got next? Uh hey, next, next up, man. 50 Cent, your man's. We we mentioned this when it was announced a couple of months ago that he was purchasing mm -hmm. land in Louisiana to build a film studio. That has officially launched. They cut the ribbon. It is open for business. My question is simple. Has 50's media career now surpassed his musical career? There's a big fucking okay, deal. So he sold. It's a really big deal. And he ain't getting nowhere near the love that Tyler Perry has been getting for building his studio. I ain't seen the same type of sentiment from the black Hollywood media that I seen from Tyler Perry. Not yet. I'm concerned about, but <clears throat> not yet. So maybe he got to do some films and have some shit coming out of there. But yeah, man, it, I would say yes. One, because maybe he ain't had the equivalent of a diamond record in hip hop. I mean, excuse me, in uh, movies. Maybe that uh -huh. hasn't happened yet. Power? You would say power? That's, that's, a, that's a diamond record? I think you, so, you, bro. You would consider... That's fair. I even argue that. So, yeah, so maybe so. so, but even if it hasn't happened, even if someone tries to argue that on you, I now have the studio which we praise Tyler Perry for. I now have this place where I can continue just to make all the content that I want without having to go to MGM, without having to go to SARS. I can do everything right here. I can hire the writers. I can make sure that what how it, how I want it made, it's going to be made that way. So this play in the long run if not even right now, yeah. it's bigger than the music play. <clears throat> of course, the music set him up for it. And I definitely understand, like, it wouldn't have been one without the other. Yes, all the people that are saying that, I agree with you there. However, when we're talking about his media career and what he set himself up for, building this studio, having the success of power, each book that he's had, BMF as well, even though it's a shit show, yeah. <laughs> um, having this studio surpasses what he's done in music. What say you? I mean, I, I got to give it to him, bro. Power, Raising Canaan, The Force, The Ghost, BMF. Just been renewed for season five, by the way. What's Which one? 
Raising Cane. Okay, BMF got BMF got, got renewed renew. already. So and he cut that shit off though. Like, yeah, I'm hearing. I, I I I didn't pick it up this season. I'm hearing that it's they stinking it up. So it may, it may not have long. But here's the thing: when when you own these studios, bro, and this is how Tyler Perry is eating, like I hate eating. This is not just for you to make your shit. Other people come and they call you and nigga Universal this and this film Miramax and this and that. They call and say, hey, we need a place to film. Oh, how much is it? Okay, cool. Here you go. And nigga next and you get checks. Yeah, that motherfucker's book just like a house. Like you renting a house. Like it's the same thing, dude. And you are taxing motherfuckers to film in your shit. So that way, when you're not doing your own stuff, it's booked up anyway from now until 2030. Because motherfuckers want to shoot Deadpool 4 in it. Like, that's the play. That's how you get to the billionaires. That's how you shoot up the Forbes list. I got to give respect where respect is due. He's going to get to a billion much faster this route than he did ever making CDs. Because his run, musically, was short. It was high. It was a high peak, but it was short. It dropped off very quickly. The fall off was steep. So I got to get to him. I didn't see this second win coming. We knew he had the business acumen with the whole white vitamin water deal and all of that. So we knew he knew what he was doing in the boardroom with the G unit Reebok and all of that shit. But this is taking it to a whole nother level. The jokes online saying that he was the male Tyler Perry is some of the funniest shit that I've seen this year, though. I will say that. Even though they got to raise up on my boy Tyler Perry, I don't stand for no TP slander. Oh, but that shit was funny. Shit, that's funny. Nah, that's funny as hell. Um, I wonder how collaborative those two will be or how collaborative 50 will be with most other people that like, for instance, Dame Dash been trying to do this movie shit for a while. That's true. I don't do we fuck no with Dame? Dame? Do they got a relationship? I don't know. I, if I were Dame, there, there should be one brewing if it's not because Dame try to do a lot of the independent film stuff. And I know that he has a shooting space. He don't got no studio like this with the right. sound stages and shit. So I would feel like it's own natural. Like 50 is creating it like, some of the best advice I got is like, you you can't go out and try to find the plug. You have to create being the plug yourself. Yeah. He's creating being the plug. Like yeah. if, if now, if it's a nigga like Dame Dash out there, it if come it's to you. a nigga like all of these small, and yeah, all these Tubi niggas is doing all of these movies. Like y'all come to me right down here in Shreveport, you black, I'm gonna give you a good deal. Even a nigga like Puff, who he don't fuck with, who yeah. trying to get revolt popping to do movies. Like I got it right here in Shreveport. So yeah. Brilliant move by fifty, man. I would I would put this over the vitamin water shit. Yeah, cause cause that was a shuck. He didn't get he didn't get that money off there like that. But that's another story. <laughs> that's one of them old wives tales, niggas. Yeah, tale that's it. all right, but man. It was, it was a play we though, but it wasn't it wasn't what niggas think it was. We got this topic straight out of AB's drafts. Uh, Gunner, Gunner will not be asked to take the stand. Uh, they're, they're not going to ask him to testify in the YSL trial, and he has a new album on deck. My question to you, A.B., are the snitching allegations totally behind Gunner? They are not, but they should be. I said oh this. God. We talked on the show. It's the same thing as lawyer said, and I was told it was lawyer talk, which I believe is a thing. Let's be clear. I get it. The lawyer is going to say what is in the best interest of his client, 100%. Right. But he said right. that. He said he will not be on the stand. He will not be giving testimony. He will not be pointing fingers. And also what was said or what was written down is only applicable to his specific case. So it cannot be used against anyone else what? in the case. That's what the lawyer said. <laughs> so one of those came true. Bro. We'll see. Time will tell about the second part, but at least one of those came true. So there will be a faction of people out there on the internet who will fake act like they care. So I'm going to say they're not behind them totally, but I do believe that they should be, or at least until otherwise that the only person I'm trying to hear from is young thug, young thugs. Dad already came out and said he was fine. There was no shit going on. Y'all niggas don't know what y'all talking about. And the stuff that the lawyer said was going to happen has now come to fruition. So the, the, the last puzzle piece for anyone that is still on the fence is hearing directly from young thug. Until he says, man, this fuck this nigga, he's a snake. I'm the reason I'm locked up because of him. Until he says that, I just wait and see. That's all I'm saying. And re reserve judgment. That's all I've been saying. That's it. That's all respectfully, I've been respectfully, AB, you don't have any idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I may not. I haven't watched Law and Order in a long time. 
it's just once you pledge allegiance to something that has like street ties like this, the number one thing that you cannot do is give a statement to the police. Now, I ain't, I'm not saying that Gunner was gang. Like, I don't know how tied in he was. I don't, I don't know any of that. I'm not sure. However, what I do know is that when you go and you sign your name on a plea agreement that says the niggas is, that I fuck with are fighting for their life and I'm testifying to them being a gang organization, that's not going to be used lightly. No, you may not have to get on the stand, but that is still presented from what I understand is evidence like that, that still happened. Like they can't erase that from the books. So no, they don't need you to come to the sand because they have you in a written, a written statement that the lawyer will read or the prosecutor will read saying that. So, I mean, I never looked at Gunner as some gangster ass, like no one I, did. I, I expect him to take all the time. So perfect. Yeah. That goes against it. all the people saying, oh, he is this and he's that. Like, no one cares, bro. As long as you make good music and you're putting it out, then, like, you, the fuck you mean, joint? Like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's all I need to do if I'm gonna. I ain't the shooter. I ain't the super gangster nigga. I'm just a nigga that was around and I just happened to know what happened, got jammed up, and I was trying to get out of jail. Does it make it excusable? No. Does it make it excusable that he doesn't have to testify? No, because they already have the information. I don't think that the people who have tied their shoes on him being the snitch, then they're, they're never going to change their minds. But I do agree with you. Like hip hop is going to become a lot more receptive of Gunner as he continues to make good music. That's just, that's just going to happen. Like that's how people are. They're front runners. So yeah, he'll start doing songs with other people. People will start fucking with him, but he won't ever wash away that thinking of street people. Cause hip hop is associated with the streets. Hip hop is a street baby. Like they, they, there will always be people to be like, oh, he's a snitch and won't listen to his music. Like that's that's just that's just it. If Young Thug comes out and speaks against that, I think that would change. It don't matter, bro. Young that's Thug can't change that, them, the rules them of niggas the game. is delusional, then, bro. Like no, I'm saying, Young Thug can't change the rules of the game, bro. Like it don't work that way. Like Young Thug mm. is on trial for racketeering. Like he he can't come out and be like, no, nah, he's cool, because people are then going to say, oh, you're just saying that because he signed to your label. And you want to make money. People saw him sit in that courtroom and tell them, oh, I think why or I know that YSL was operating as a gang. You supposing to be a part of that organization, you can't do that. And I know people do it all. People snitch all the time. I don't know why people are trying to act like this shit was new with Gunner, like the mafia have been doing this for years. This happens with gangster organizations and people go on. Sammy the Bull was very successful after he snitched on John Gotti. It happens. It ain't out of the, it ain't unprecedented. Right, right. So I, I will agree with you in saying, okay, he got, Gunner got a little too much flack. This nigga wasn't even, and I'm not saying this in any derogatory way, but he wasn't a real gangster, bro. Like, he right, wasn't right. out. I, I never heard of Gunner in the car. Like, they talking about Young Thug rented the car and possibly was driving, allegedly, right. with motherfuckers in the shootout. I could see that with him. When Gunner sitting up there, he like, bro, I was just rapping. I thought this shit was cool. Okay, yeah, you're right. So you should have done what you've done, but it still doesn't wipe away how people will proceed. It just doesn't. That's like, silly. it's going to be like the streets... The streets have people hypnotized. Ah, uh, that's fair. Like the streets is very like yeah, so like they gonna always be in that like ah that nigga snitch type mode. Like those, th those are just niggas that he ain't gotta worry about. I'm gone. Uh, I got security. I got money. I got bad bitches. Like I, there's no need for me to worry about the niggas that think I'm a snitch. The people that are gonna buy my music, I'm gonna talk to them from now. On. Yep. That's what he should be focused on. Well, that we I, we but can I don't probably think predict that there's a whole another year at least left on that trial, though, which is insane. At least that they, they, they said that trial may not end in 2025, 2026. That's that's crazy as hell. Yeah. No. Ah, uh, all right, man. Is it on me? Yeah. Is it on? Yeah. All right. Last before Thanks. we get to these wins and these losses. Oh uh, no, it was on me. My bad. You right. Uh, you uh yeah. My bad. Listen. The gunner shit got me thrown out of the way off. Niggas is backwards. Um, <laughs> a ranking of TDE artists appeared on Twitter. And reason, maybe former, possibly, TDE artists commented. He shouldn't even been on the list, allegedly. Allegedly. And uh, Punch also commented. Um, it had re They had reason last. 
at number 12. And Reason kind of poking <laughs> fun at this, he quoted and said, man, this isn't fair, and I have a problem with this immensely. It's clear y'all have y'all do not pay attention to music. I should be number 13. You forgot Dochi on the list, which is another a female artist who's actually kind of dope. Um, so he's kind of poking fun at it, saying I should be last. For reference, number one, I ain't going to go through the whole list, but the top three was Isaiah Rashad at one, two was Schoolboy Q, and three was Sir. Uh, so that was the list. <laughs> what do you think about I the list, and what do you think about uh, Reason's response to it? I put this on here just to hear you respond to Isaiah Rashad being number one, but we'll get to that. Uh, um, this list went from having black hippies with five, 10 years ago with Kendrick Lamar, J rock, Absol, Schoolboy Q to what we see it as today. I don't agree with Isaiah Rashad as number one. I would put Schoolboy or Scissor right there. And then I would have J rock closer to or three. Um, other than that, man, I ain't even gonna hold you. I just started seeing this daylight nigga name. I fuck with Sir. I do not listen to Isaiah Rashad. Man, fuck it. Like that, that, you know, that's one of the most when people stop me to listen to On Deck and they're like, man, y'all be shit with Isaiah Rashad. I'm like, bro, like that. That's one of the most talked about things about this show as far as how we feel about Isaiah Rashad. You specifically, because I don't hate him, I just don't listen to him. All the rest of these dudes, uh. The Vaughn nigga, the Lance Skywalker, the Zakari, and even the guy that Reason mentioned. I will put Reason away closer to the front because I actually listened to him. Yeah. This this list is all over the place. I feel like somebody was trolling, even putting Isaiah Rashad at one over schoolboy. But I'm not mad at it. It 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 shows the depth of their roster. I can't name another label in the game where you're gonna go one through twelve. I I definitely don't know that. Yeah. Uh, so the fact that they got twelve people that people are actually considering it and know of, I would say that's a big win to TDE, but I would not have Isaiah Rashad at number one. I would have Schoolboy at one. I would probably have Scissor at two, and I would have J-Rock at three, followed by Sir at four. Mm. I, say I actually like that. That's actually a nice, uh, and then probably Reason at five. I would probably swap yeah, Reason and Sir, but that's, a, that's actually a nice, the way you just broke it down. Let me tell you one mm. thing I wouldn't have. I would not in any circumstances have Isaiah Rashad number one on any list. I ain't got him number one on TDE. I ain't got him number one of Chattanooga rappers. I ain't got him number one with niggas named Isaiah, bro. Like I don't, there's, there's no way on earth. He's number one in anything, bro. You said you don't hate his music. You also don't listen to it. If you listen to it, you would hate it. Trust me, nigga. It is some of the worst music I've ever heard. With that being said, I'm glad he has a fan base. I'm sure people are looking forward to his release this year. TDE, remember, they supposed to be on their No Limit shit this year. Yeah. It's supposed to be dropping every month, twice a month. We're waiting on the next one. I, I don't know which one is the next joint. I think it may be Ray Vaughn. He put out a single or two. We'll see. But right now they got, well, I was going to say they got bigger fish to fry with Kendrick, but I forgot he's not there. He's not on his he list. He's there no more. Yeah, he ain't there. So, bro, I, <laughs> people be... People want Isaiah Rashad to win so bad, and so do I. I want him to win too, man. How did he get so much sympathy from the world? That's what I be wondering. With Bro, Nick, like as I said, niggas always come up to me and they be like, ah, oh, y'all be shitting on Isaiah Rashad. Y'all hate Chattanooga because y'all from Nashville. Like, I've heard it all. And I'm like, bro, I ain't even going to hold you. Like, there's nothing appealing about Isaiah Rashad music for me to even have, like, to, a response to you. I don't even know how you got to the place where you feel like you should say something to me about Isaiah Rashad. I don't get it. But Bro. I mean, to each his own. I guess he is making some for somebody out there because they show they repping that nigga. Yeah, he's on some people's champ shit, bro. But it's it's just bad music. Like, I just can't. I just no other way to slice it, bro. It's terrible fucking music, and he ain't talking about shit. Dude. That's funny. Shit. TDE roll out the J. Give me the J Rock release date. Quit bullshitting. Give me the. I'll take the Ab Soul release date. Give me the Scissor release date. Y'all what? Y'all knocked out the part with Schoolboy. That album is fire. Mm -hmm. Cool. Give me the. I'm interested to hear what Ray Vaughn gonna do because I've heard him yep. on freestyles and the little Lucy's and he be spitting. Cool. Let me get that. Lance Skywalker is a different sound. I'm not sure if I can listen to a whole project of his, but I'd be interested. Everybody else, I'm out. Uh, now nah, give me that last that last reason album too before he get out of there. If he's oh, still he there, he, he wasn't yeah, even yeah. announced, bro. He probably like ten ten out. Well, damn, that's just true. He wasn't even well, remember he, he wasn't even nowhere announced. else. He ain't going nowhere else. Nah, he, sure he, 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 he might go to Dreamville. 
if Drake, if 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 excuse me, if if Kendrick is dropping and giving Top Dog 50. I know he got this nigga, this other nigga, his reason nigga in a deal. I know this is he dropping, give me a hundred, nigga. Like, you ain't going nowhere, bro. We just going to sit you on the shelf. If if Kendrick got a drop and give Top Dog 50, I know reason got to. Shit. So he go on and give me that reason. At least, yeah, bro. go on and give me that reason album, too, because I know y'all got it and y'all ain't letting that shit go. All right, man, let's get into some wins and some losses before we get out of here, A.B. First win or a loss, Nas announces a long-awaited DJ premiere project, and it was off this single that they dropped over the weekend. Did you like the single? When, was the single a win or a loss, and is the DJ premiere project a win or a loss? Uh, I got, I got to run a single back again. I listened to it once. I need to spin it again uh, before I can claim that a win or a loss. The project is a win, though. People have been talking about this. For what scene you talked about Boosie being relevant for four decades. People have been talking about this project for four decades. And so it's a win for the hip hop community. I need to run the song back again, though. It was just too much going on this weekend. But uh it's a W for sure. People have been looking for that. Yeah, big W. Uh people have been looking for that. And man, bro, listening to this song, Nas, it's amazing that this nigga still carried 50. He rapping like Yo. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all are playing with me. Y'all don't act like y'all don't know that I'm Nas. Like he still gives a fuck at 50, which I find fucking incredible. Shout yeah. out to Nas for that, man. That's a big W. I am not checking out the album, though. I ain't here for the none of that boom bap shit. No. Uh win or a loss A B. Dame Lillard's ex-wife throws shade at Gro- a Glorilla after a DUI arrest and posts to her Instagram story calling it uh she called them sister wives. Because yeah, Glow yeah. shot her shot at Dame a little earlier in the year. Is this a win or a loss, man? I couldn't tell if this was a shot, though. She called her Glow Lillard. I didn't know that was a yeah. shot. I thought she was kind of playing nah, into it, was, it. Yeah, it was a it was a shot like you're trying to fuck my ex-husband. And I don't really oh, fuck with I you. Mean... She was laughing at you for getting a DUI. But Glow did respond, though. What'd she say? <laughs> When it got the Glow Lillard jersey made. Oh, yeah. That, I did see that. That was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what I know. I didn't know his ex wife was throwing shade. Hey, man, if, you, if she's yeah. going to be mad at every motherfucker throwing a shoe and they shot at Dame Lillard, dude, the nigga worth like 800 million, dude. You're going to have to stand in line. You're going to be you're going to be pissed off for a very long time. <laughs> I think like, I think it was the way, even now, I mean, you have a great point, but the way that Glow shot her shot, she was like, she took a picture with Dame. And she was like, "Who nigga is this? I'm about to take him." Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was talking big <laughs> so, shit. But, but again, that was already her ex husband, though. That, so it don't yeah. like it shouldn't matter, bitch. Like you shouldn't be mad. But yeah, it, it, very interesting back and forth, man. Shout out to Glorilla for having a sense of humor, going to get the jersey made with the glow. That shit was funny. <laughs> if I'm Dame, I'm hitting that up yesterday. I ain't even gonna hold you. I'm going if you're Dame, Milwaukee. are you? Are you? Absolutely, bro. What else? What else is there to do in Milwaukee? I'm sure there's a Glorilla walking around in Milwaukee, bro. I'm going to keep it a buck. There's a, there's a Glorilla working at Starbucks but, right now. But she's not Glorilla, though. That's the thing. She ain't Glorilla. I'm Dame. I can't be fucking the Starbucks Glorilla. I got to get the real Glorilla, dude. I can't, I can't get the McDonald's Glorilla or the Walmart Glorilla, bro. I got to get the real one. Fly her in. Bitch, stay out here about a month. Let's lay up for about a month with her. I can't, I can't have the knockoffs. <laughs> All right, man. Last win or loss before we get out of here, AB. Freeway announces a scholarship in his daughter's name. What do you think about that? Yeah, now, Big W. Um, this was super dope. Shout out to his daughter. Uh, Hana. It, it, this says the, the scholarship fund is in memory of his late daughter and will support 18 young Muslim women who are graduating high school. Uh, super right. Triple salute to that. He lost his 21 year old daughter to cancer a couple of years ago. So it's how you turn, you know, grief into gold, be a blessing to other people. Salute the freeway for this man. Big W. Absolutely. I agree, man. Big W. I I, I love the resilience that freeway has showed throughout. Cause I think something else happened to him too, man. Like, like I mean, he right been fighting some health shit too, bro. Yeah. So right around the same time, man. So shout out to him and shout out to him. Like you said, turning the weeks ago and blessing other people with something that will keep his daughter's name alive. Big win. Losing Big your w. 21 year old to cancer is some supreme slaw. Easy, bro. He's sick. Um, so on deck of the week, shout out to Ice Water Willie 8179. He said, man, I've been waiting on this one. 
with the laughing emojis this of course was the drop and give me 50 episode and shout out to public enemy b his picks for playlist concert if he had his choice he would do lupe tde as a whole i hope that does not include isaiah rashad and big crit the big crit is nice i like that the no, mixtape b-side big crits right. go hard yeah that, that i would be in there but a lupe playlist show is insane that's nuts. I, you know, I fuck with Lupe. That, and I, I'll, I'll do his. Um, I'm, I'm if he did that first album, I fuck with that though. I'll do I'm that. I'm almost out on Lupe. He been hating on Kendrick Heavy. Like he been, he Slick. been really like he been really Slick. doing some hating ass shit. He has Kendrick here lately, man. I don't, I don't really fuck with that. Ab, what you got to put us on this week? Um, I'm a double down. I think you mentioned it last week. The Civil War movie. I went ahead and saw it. I can go ahead and double stamp it. It was pretty dope. Um, it was a little slow at the beginning, I ain't gonna lie, but once it kind of caught its footing, and when you, it's one of the ones when you're done and you're on the way home, you start to thinking about it, it starts to get a little bit better in your mind. Uh, but super, super cool movie, man. I, I definitely would suggest, I'll double down and suggest that people check that out, like you said. Facts, man. Um, my put on would be, if you're not familiar with the other content I'm doing, make sure you go check it out. We're reviewing X-Men 97. I'm sure you fucking oh. with that, A.B. Uh, go check that out on Frames Per Second. X-Men 97 and Shogun. And go check out Another Week in the Books. And go check out The Good Earners, Sopranos, the Podcast. Uh, just tap in, man. We appreciate you guys being a part of what we do and even the extra shit that we do with A.B. and myself. So thank y'all. We appreciate it. Good night. I cried on that last X-Men, too. Um, with, with spoiler alert, no with, spoilers. With, I ain't even gonna say it. With your man, no, that they done. They oh, done so me dirty. Up. You wasn't. You wasn't caught up. That ain't. The I last am one. now. That ain't the last one. It's, it's the next one. Oh well, yeah. I didn't see the next one though. But I'm saying okay. that one. I almost threw my Apple TV out the goddamn window. Man, that, was, that was killer episode, nigga. And I ain't even Ooh. into it like that. Boy, that shit was fire. Some I had to come bullshit. to the chat and ask y'all niggas if y'all seen that. Some bullshit. But you know, I ain't even gonna say because I, yeah, I say it once we stop recording. There you go. All right, man. Until next week, man. Y'all fuck with us. YouTube.com slash on TV show. Leave a comment and like and tell a friend. So we'd appreciate it. Next week, we'll see y'all.